Aloha, welcome to Hawaii State of Clean Energy. I am Mark Lake, I'm the chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And I want to welcome you today uh, for a great discussion on uh, community energy programs uh, provided by Hawaiian Electric. We have a wonderful uh, guest, uh, Lani Shinsato, who is going to be talking about uh, how, how uh, these important programs that have been developed really with the commu uh, the consumer the energy um, user in mind have been developed uh, over the last number of years. And uh, we'll, we'll spend some time talking about it, but first we'll get a wonderful presentation on what some of these new programs were are and uh, pretty exciting and uh, pretty beneficial to um, our energy consumers throughout um, Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian Electric's service territory. Lonnie, uh, why don't you uh, briefly introduce yourself and, uh, and go into the presentation? Thank you, Mark, and aloha, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be here, and Mark, it's really nice to see you again, and I'm excited to talk story about our programs at Hawaiian Electric. Um, I'm Lani Shinsato. I'm the co-director of Customer Energy Resources at Hawaiian Electric. So my team oversees our um, rooftop solar and battery programs that we offer to our commercial and residential customers at all three of our service territories on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii Island. So we manage um, our kind of legacy programs, older programs like net energy metering, as well as our latest and greatest programs like battery bonus that I will talk about in a little bit and uh, shared solar, our community-based renewable energy program, which we call shared solar. And we're about to launch a big kind of phase two of that program. But I understand two of my teammates or, or colleagues from Hawaiian Electric will be coming to the show soon to talk about that program. So I'm not gonna get into details on that today day. Um, but I wanted to focus first on kind of some basics. So what is a customer energy resource? That is the name of my team, customer energy resources. What does that mean? And also our plan to grow these resources over time. And then I'll switch gears and get into battery bonus, which is um, one recent way that we have tried to grow these resources in the very near term. Um, but before we start off, and I think it's okay if we bring up the slide deck uh, now. Um, before I start, I uh, wanted to add one thing that it's really, I think, a, a good thing that we in Hawaii are leading the way, leading the nation in adoption of customer energy resources. But we do have a lot of work to do going forward. So I hope that the viewers uh, watching this will um, go away feeling inspired, you know, feeling like they want to get better engaged with their usage, uh, hoping they'll check out our programs, including Battery Bonus, and think of some way that they can take action um, as we as a state are taking action against climate change, because it's really going to take all of us, whether you take a big step or a small step, it's going to take all of us to, to really take action against climate change. Okay, thank you. So next slide, please. So what is a customer energy resource? I think when you ask that question, most people will jump to rooftop solar, which is true. That is definitely a customer energy resource, but our definition goes well beyond that. Um, so you can see on the right, there's an illustration of our grid. And traditionally, we, the utility, have generated all of the energy we and all of the kind of ancillary or grid services that are needed to allow us to safely and reliably transmit that energy down the grid to the edge of the grid where all of our customers are. That's traditional. Now we have about 90,000 plus 
generators that are our customers at the edge of the grid. And if they have a battery, they're able to not only produce energy, but also provide us grid services that we need to safely and reliably transmit that energy and they can be compensated for it. So the grid has completely changed and we're really relying on our customers to provide what we had only provided before. So on the left hand of the slide, you can see some examples of um, what I'm talking about for customer energy resources. There's the traditional rooftop PV uh, who are the producers of the energy. Now we have um, technology that can be both a producer and a consumer. So battery storage that's sited at a customer's uh, residence or their business and electric vehicles. And then we have technology that can be just a consumer of energy. So smart thermostats, water heaters, pool pumps, air conditioners, anything that we can manage to um, better kind of manage the supply and demand of energy on the grid helps us to better integrate more renewable resources onto the grid. Okay, next slide, please. So we are leading the nation in adoption of customer energy resources, but we do have room to grow and work to do. And this graph depicts that. Um, this came out of our integrated grid planning or IGP process. This is our forecast for customer energy resources uh, from 2020 all the way to 2050. Um, but one thing we did last year is um, we issued a climate action plan where we are committing to a 70% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030. So that's the blue milestone you see there for 2030. And one of the ways we said we would get to that target is to add an additional 50,000 rooftop solar systems to the 90,000 that we already have on the grid. Um, so this is definitely a stretch goal for us, just for context. Um, we, our team has a goal every year to add so many megawatts of customer energy resources every year. Last year, our goal was 38 megawatts for 2021. We exceeded that. We're happy about that. We got 53 megawatts. Um, but this year, and you can see this on the graph here, the jump is quite high. Our goal this year is 119 megawatts. Um, so it's definitely a stretch. We're always looking at ways uh, for us to get this increased amount. Uh, and I'll go to the next slide. Battery bonus is one way we're looking at doing that. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Next slide, please. Okay, so switching gears. I mentioned that we have to grow these resources over time. Um, and so this is one way, battery bonus is one way that we're trying to increase adoption in customer energy resources. Um, I'm happy to say that this was a very collaborative um, initiative. So we worked very closely with our local solar industry here on how we can create a program that would address a need and kind of incent customers to enroll in, in this program. Okay, next, program, uh, next slide, please. At the highest level, this is an overview of our new program. We are paying um, an upfront cash incentive to our commercial and residential customers who um, enroll in this. This is on Oahu only for now. Um, and the whole objective is to get customers to invest in storage. And you can be either an existing customer that already has PV, or you can be a totally new customer and sign up for PV and storage tomorrow. Um, and the 
really the objective is to move us more quickly towards our renewable energy goals and to kind of fill this gap that is near term. So our biggest generating unit is a coal-fired plant of the AES plant, and it's set to retire in September of this year. Uh, this is on Oahu. And um, we have identified uh, with our regulators, the PUC, and I know Mark's organization was involved with this, um, a reserves gap that is going to happen sort of around this time frame when the AES plant retires. And so we are trying to get our customers to kind of fill this gap for us in the very near term, which is why we're offering these incentives to get our customers to invest in batteries and PV to help us with the AES coal retirement situation. Okay, next slide, please. So what are the incentives there um, on a tiered system? There's 50 megawatts total capacity for this program. It was set by the PUC. If you sign up early, you get the best incentives. So for the first 15 megawatts, customers will get $850 per KW um, of committed capacity that they give us. So for example, 5KW of committed capacity will have that customer get a check for $4,250 as their incentive. And then they kind of step down after that. So for the next 15 megawatts, the incentives drop by $100 to $750 per KW. And then for the last 20 megawatts of the program, the incentives drop to $500 per KW. And I should note that the incentive goes to the owner of the storage. So for customers who might sign up for a leasing type of system, then the incentive will actually go to the vendor who owns that storage system. But for customers who will um, finance that storage and own it themselves, then they get the check sent to them. Okay, next slide, please. We started this program last July and saw kind of some lukewarm adoption by customers. And so we worked again closely with the solar industry, with our stakeholders to see if we could kind of boost enrollment in the program and come up with some new perks. We were able to do that and we presented those to the PUC in March, and those got approved, and they're going to be effective June 1st. So here's the new perks. Now, um, if you're not a net energy metering customer or NEM, um, you will get an additional monthly export credit. And the reason why we did this is because we noticed when the program launched, um, we were mainly seeing them customers signing up for the program. We wanted to make sure that customers who were not NEM and who had signed up for our other programs had kind of equal access to the program. So that's why we came up with this incentive. It's good for um, three years. The second additional perk is we will give customers $5 per KW monthly peak capacity payment. And this is good for the entire 10 year term of the program. And then the third thing we did was we used to have a size limit. So if customers wanted to add PV, we said you can add up to 5 KW um, per customer but we realized that commercial customers weren't really signing up as much as we wanted and it was kind of due to this limitation so um, we wanted to again expand access to the program to commercial customers so we got rid of this size limitation and we told customers you can do this as long as the additional solar is no more than twice the size of the battery next slide please There are obligations to the program. You know, we try to be clear with customers. It's not just a free battery program that you, you do need to kind of perform for us in order to get the money. Um, so here are the obligations. 
we're trying to address an evening peak situation. So most customers, um, you know, will come home. This is kind of under pre-COVID days, but most customers will go to work. They come home at around five. They turn on their stove. They cook. They do laundry. So we have the most demand during the evening peak, and we want to be able to lower that evening peak. So that is why the obligation is that the customer must either use um, the you know, energy from their battery or export electricity from that battery back to us for two hours between six, sometime between six to 8.30 at night, every night, um, including weekends and holidays until December 31st, 2023. And the reason why we put that time frame around it is because again, we're trying to address the, the resource issue from the AES retirement. It's a full 10 year program. However, the um, battery needs to perform in this way, set scheduled you know, every night until December, 2023. And then the customer can kind of transfer into um, a new option. Next slide, please. And then this is kind of money, but it is a requirement. We have to make sure that the battery is operating and complying with our requirements. So once the battery is installed and operational, then the customer has 30 days to confirm that it is operating for our requirements and they have to submit seven days worth of data to our team. And so we will check that the battery is complying and double check that the amount that it's being um, used during the peak and that helps us validate the amount of the incentive check that we end up sending to the customer. Okay, next slide, please. If for some reason the customer is not happy being in the program, it's okay, they're not stuck forever, there is a way to get out. They just need to provide us with 60 day notice. But because we are really using this resource uh, and are paying an incentive for it, then we're gonna have the customer decides to back out uh, and withdraw from the program. Then we are asking the customer to give us back a prorated amount of the incentive they received to participate in the program. And we'll give them options. They can either do it you know, via a lump sum or repay us through some kind of repayment um, arrangement on their bill. Okay, I think this is close to the last slide. Next slide, please. So if uh, you are interested, please visit our website. There's a wealth of information there, uh, hawaiianelectric.com slash battery bonus. We have a um, handy PDF that we've put together that has um, you know, facts about the program, the requirements, um, how you can get enrolled, please feel free to look at that. We also have a frequently asked questions section that we're continually updating as we get questions from our contractors who are selling this program to customers and also from our customers. So that's also a great resource for um, people to use and to look at. And last slide, I think that's it. Thank you. Oh, that's so great, much. Lonnie. Thank you. No, that's fantastic. I, there, there definitely are a, a lot, lot of follow-up questions, um, and you know, I think you've already talked about where people can go uh, to get more information. You have wonderful brochures. If you go on your website, you have a really great uh, section on community energy services. But um, you know, first and foremost, I mean, if if somebody just has a burning question on this. Is, is there a helpline that they can they can actually talk to a real person? For sure, they can call our customer service representatives, or they can email us at that email address to that was on the last slide. Connect at hawaiianelectric.com. We're happy to answer their questions. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there are significant benefits, uh, particularly you know on a five kilowatt system where all, ultimately the payment could exceed $4,000. Um, obviously, this, this could really affect the bottom line significantly. But I, I found it very intriguing that uh, for those, it applies not only to new, uh, new uh, sort of battery installations, 
but also existing PV and uh, battery, I guess, addition, battery additions to existing systems where it did appear to me that you could actually even increase somewhat your PV panels. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? That's correct. And that's exactly what we saw in the early part of the program. It made a lot of sense for our net energy metering customers who came on kind of a long time ago in terms of our PV years, right? So maybe like five to 10 years ago, um, not with storage. And perhaps they're, um, they're wanting to increase their load now. They want to get an EV or their kids are coming back home and their load is going to increase and they're still paying a bill that, you know, they want to see come down a little bit more. Um, it really makes sense for those. And maybe they were kind of interested in battery storage just for the resiliency um, help value that it provides. Um, so this is kind of a perfect opportunity for them to add some additional PV and also the battery as well and get the incentive. Um, so that's who we saw the most of our NEM customers adopting this at first. We said, hey, it's great. You know, we want enrollment, but we want other customers to adopt it too, which is why we worked on some additional perks that were focused on not just NEM customers, but customers who had signed up for customer grid supply or smart export um, and the other programs that we offer. Now, that's great. I, you know, there's so many people that have talked to you that have uh, PV that uh, have wondered about how, to, how are they ultimately going to do that. I, I think many of them thought they would never be able to expand the system. So this gives them an opportunity to, and the battery bonus obviously uh, is good for everyone. Like you said, it will fill in a lot of gaps as we uh, retire our single greatest contingency problem uh, for those that's in the tech world uh, concerned about uh, the closure of the AES plant and what that 180 megawatt system, firm power system, uh, will do to our system when when we're uh, now having this sort of imbalance with intermittent energy uh, being more dominant, uh, at least for a while. Um, you know, getting back to the purpose of this, you talked about, of course, you know, trying to be helpful uh, to the AES situation, but uh, we also know that um, there was a, a long um, and very eventful uh, docket one of many uh, that dealt with performance-based regulation. And in the de decision and order that was issued in June of uh, 2021, there were a lot of these performance incentive mechanisms that were built into place. It sounds to me like this program is really what the commission had intended. And I think what the company had intended with their, its response, is this, is this kind of part of the PBR prog uh, overall program? Yeah, thanks for the question, Mark. It's a good one. We know that um, from the Commission's perspective and from our perspective, grid services coming from our customers um, is very, very important and, and critical. And that's what we're working so hard to do. And the Commission did give us a grid services performance incentive mechanism to make sure we carry that through. Um, I don't think that this program has been approved for the PIM yet, um, but we <laughs> certainly would hope that that would be the outcome. And I, I was remiss in mentioning that although it's for Oahu only now, because we're trying to address the AES situation, actually just today, we filed a request with the PUC to expand the program to Maui because we are having a similar situation there with the retirement of the Kahalui power plant. So for Maui customers, um, heads up, you know, we hope that this program can come to you soon. Well, it sounds like a, a really great um, and effective program to pr provide some incentives to uh, ratepayers, And uh, I hope we'll see it throughout your service territory ultimately. Um, you know, with uh, customer energy services and particularly under PVR, this push for greater consumer engagement, um, you have other programs. And, and I know that you've worked really hard on your energy portal. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that and how that's uh, helping customers? 
Yeah, by our energy portal, are you talking about our customer interconnection tool? Yeah, well, and also the thing that would sort of lead to uh, this green button connect oh, right. and the other kind of programs. Yes, yes. So um, I'll touch really briefly on the customer interconnection tool. And that's really our, our engine for my team, because now um, pretty right. much all applications go through that tool. It's automated. Um, we worked really hard to put enhancements into it. So the process overall, in terms of applying for any of our programs, has become much more efficient and streamlined over the years, just because now we've moved to automation and we have that tool. And then for um, the energy portal, we are also moving to that. I think that's going to be really exciting as we continue to deploy AMI. And um, our GridMod team is working really hard to get that done. That's supposed to be completed by Q3 of next year. So, you know, I, I mentioned it up front in the beginning. We really want our customers to get more engaged with their usage. And by having AMI, by having access to this energy portal, they can see in great detail how they're using energy when, you know, and then can make corrections based on that kind of data. Um, we also are looking at time of use rates and we propose that to our PUC. So the more our customers know about how they use energy and how they can kind of better adjust their usage, then that'll help them save money if they were to come up on a, a time of use rate. So that's a very exciting opportunity for our customers. Oh, that's great. And, you know, as we get to the close of the program, um, it is very exciting uh, to see that you have uh, essentially moved forward. You talk about advanced metering infrastructure for those of you that don't know what AMI stands for, but, you know, the smart meters and essentially the entire um, equipment that will allow you to better take advantage of these automatically time of use rates and, and, and the way to shift energy around the, the day to move it away from the peak, uh, or at least to, to get um, the, the excess uh, solar energy uh, to peak power times and so on, and to move people away from the peak power times. It seems like you're doing all the right things now to, to try to get all of that aligned. Uh, any final words as um, we close out uh, this show? I think I would just end with what I started uh, saying up front which is we're really relying on our customers, which are all of you who are watching, if you're watching in the state of Hawaii, or at least within our service territory. So um, I really encourage all of you to really just get engaged and see how you can take part in this transformation that we're all trying to achieve in Hawaii and moving to a decarbonized economy and a state that is based on 100% renewable energy. Well, nothing more I can add to that, Lonnie. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to share these new programs with us. And I think a lot of people are going to be taking advantage of them. Uh, hopefully, they'll also go back to the sources that you cited uh, for greater information. Uh, thank you again. And uh, that closes out this episode of Hawaii State of uh, Clean Energy. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.